Okay, so we are focusing on uh, our first little practice program here called DDD. And the first command I need to teach you how to do is display. It's pretty crucial in a program that you display stuff to the person who's using the program. Okay, so let's go to display. It's under program. Now, once we're in the programming mode, the programming button brings up three new things. CTL, which is control functions. You can do an if, then. And one kid, last hour, program button, please. Program, PRGM. Okay, uh, one kid last hour uh, used this if, then in there. I don't know how he did it. He did it that fast. He took the idea that you could do an if, then statement, and he made his little program figure out that if the person entered a negative number so that it was going to come out with an imaginary number, he would then automatically tell the person that their answer would be imaginary. So you can do an if then, like for instance, if you t ask the person in your program, how many kids do you have? Or you know, how many kids are in your family? And they type in like 12, you can say, if the response is greater than 10, then display the word ridiculous or something like that, okay? All right, so uh, if I, those, those are control functions. What do you think IO stands for? Input, output, yep, those are input outputs, and an EXEC, those are executables. All right, let's not worry about those for now. Input, output is where we're going to do all our stuff today. And do you remember what I was going for this time? Display, which is the third one down there. So you can either hit a three, which is the fastest way, so why not? Hit a three, and it'll put in display. So your computer has been told right now to display something. Now what do we want it to display? Well, in this little program that we're going to do, we're going to do area of a triangle. So just for a, the name of our program, that's the first thing you should do is tell your user what the program does, right? Let's just call it area. But you need to put in, if I typed in A-E-R-A, -A, it would display A times R times E times A. You know what I mean? This thing thinks like a calculator. It thinks A is a variable and R is another variable. So if we want to have it say variable, we have to go to the alpha key and hit the quotes. Display quote area. Now I can type in area. I'm going to get my alpha lock going and go A, R, E, uh, A, end quotes. Display area. And that's my area program. All right. And let's do, let's do a fairly simple area. And let's tell the person to type in a, a a length, and then we'll tell them to type in, you know what, let's make it even simpler. Area of a square is about as simple as it gets, right? And we type in the length of a side, and then we do what to it? Square it. Okay, and that'll tell you the area of a, of a square. So let's tell the person, so display again. Everybody go to program, display. That's under IO, three. Display. And then in quotes again, get that alpha lock going. Uh, let's do length. Let's just type in side, S-I-D-E, just to save time. S-I-D-E. I missed the D somehow. D-E. And then the end quotes. Okay, display side. Now, I hit enter and I get another line for my program. And so far, it's, it's going to say area and then side. And then I want to actually now gather some info from the user. Okay, so I'm going to tell my calculator to do this function. It's under program, input, output. It's a prompt. We want to prompt them to give us a number. Prompt. And then we've got to tell it where to store it. Because the calculator can't just store something, you know, on its, like, RAM. It can't just, like, store it somewhere. It has to have it in a certain spot. It's very organized. So we need to tell it to store it where. What's a logical place to store the answer to how long the side is? S is a logical place. So let's store it under variable S. So I go alpha and S. There it is. Prompt S. Enter. Now that's going to take whatever that person types in now as the length of its side. 
And the next part is the part where you're actually doing the calculating. Now we've got to do the calculation of how, what would the area of this thing be? S squared. Very good. I take S times S. So I'm going to go S. times s, or I could have just said s squared, but oopie, back one and delete that, s times s, or you could have said s squared, but now I have to store that answer somewhere, again, it just can't have a random answer sitting around, it needs to know where to put it, what should we put it in, so say store it in, a. So now we've taken the area and stored it under A, but we haven't displayed it that to our user yet. So now we'd have another part where we say display program. Go over to display. It's the third one. And I could just say display A, but all it does then is slaps the answer down and it doesn't tell them what it is. So I'd like to have it tell the person what the answer is. So I'm going to display some more words. So I'm going to use my alpha lock and use the quotes. Area is, is what I'm going to type. Area, and to get the space, remember it's right above the zero. A, R, E, A, space, is I S and then the quotes and now how do you think I'm going to actually print out the answer so I just say a display a program display third one a now this is a basic program let's go through what we did again it's going to just print, think of display as being print. It's going to print area, side, and then it's going to prompt S, which is going to ask the person for what S is. And they're going to type it in, and then it's going to take S times S, and it's going to store it under A. And then it's going to display or print area is A. Whatever A is, it'll print it then. All right, so now let's actually run our program. You go second quit. It seems like it's not saving it, but it is. Second quit actually is how you save it. So you quit. Yes? Other programs will automatically store. Uh, you can use A and S again. Don't worry about that. Because it will automatically take whatever the new person types in and store it under A. So it, it doesn't permanently tell your calculator. Once I've told A is 5, it's not like stuck at 5 forever. As soon as I tell it something new to put in for A, it will. That's a good question, though. We, we can use variables over and over again. All right. But within the same program, you don't want to try to use this, the letter A and for different things. All right. So now I'm going to go back to program. Now we actually have a program. It's called DDD. And then we hit, oh, wait, do I want to execute it? Yeah, I do. I want to run that program. Program DDD, hit enter. Area side. S equals, let's do uh, 5. So I type in 5. Enter. Area is 25. Isn't that cool? So you've got a real program now that you did that does the area of a square. Now, obviously, we can do the area of much more complicated things. In fact, that's what I want to do now. I'm going to stop this and record the next in part three.